so glad that you connected. You're home, I'm home, but yet we are connecting through technology and the spirit, the spirit of God that is keeping us and protecting us. It is now time for us to worship the Lord. Matter of fact, why don't you go ahead and like and share. Let everybody know that you are in worship. Take a moment right now even to praise God for how he has kept us, he's protected us. Let your family know, hey, God has been good to us. Go ahead and type an emoji with praying hands or uplifted hands because it is time to worship the Lord. Let's get our hearts and our minds ready because he is worthy of the praise. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Stay connected because we're about to have word and worship and I'm so glad that you're online. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to thank you uh, for all those uh, to continue to show your generosity and your love through your donations. Thank you for your faithfulness. We understand that in this time, it is an act of faith to show generosity. It is an act of faith to trust and to sow seed. And we thank you for doing that. We have several ways that you can show uh, your donation and show your gratitude. I ask that you would take note of that. And again, we thank you. It's time for the word of the Lord. Let's gather ourselves so that we can go into the word of the Lord. Let us turn our attention to the book of Acts, the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 28. Acts, the fourth chapter, verse 28, says, They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. 
Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Since the beginning of this year, we have been focusing on our theme, resilience. And in the last couple of months, we have been tested. Our resilience has been stretched and pulled. We find that resilience is not a new thing. Matter of fact, the Bible shows us through the early church in the book of Acts what it means to have resilience. Uh, as we look in the book of Acts, this is after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is resurrected, however, he is not physically present with his disciples. Disciples are left to carry out the gospel of Jesus Christ without the presence of their leader and their savior, Jesus. We find that in the fourth chapter of Acts, that the early church is in trouble. The early church is being persecuted. They are dealing with adversity. What's surprising to me is that we find that even though they're being persecuted, they are also, they're not surprised. They expected to go through trials. And they expected to have some hardship because they realized that you cannot put down the cross for the sake of comfort. They realized that if they're gonna fully follow Jesus, be resilient in carrying out his gospel that not everybody would like it. Matter of fact, the Sadducees, the ones who, who plotted and, and killed Jesus, are now the same ones that is coming to attack Peter and James. The Bible says that they looked at them and said, who are these men that are, that are preaching? They are uneducated to they're not qualified. They have the audacity to preach. But not only do they have the audacity to keep on preaching, they keep on preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. The Bible goes on to tell us that Peter and James begin to have a conversation with God and saying, God, consider the threats. Consider the threats that we are dealing with in what we are facing, consider what's going on. But their prayer did not stop there. They said, consider the threats, but give us boldness so that we are able to carry out your gospel. And that's, that's what I want to focus on this morning. If we're going to be a resilient disciple is that we have to have boldness. You see, I'm not talking about boldness by you posting all your business on Facebook. I'm, I'm not talking about boldness where you're speaking out of emotions but I'm talking about boldness according to the book of Acts that one of the signs of the spirit or receiving the Holy Ghost was not just speaking in tongues but having boldness a boldness to carry out the gospel what what I find very interesting is that they are being persecuted talked about criticized all because they are carrying the gospel of Jesus and and their prayer is not, Lord, go get my enemy. No, their first thought is not, God, if you just take care of this, I wouldn't have to deal with this. No, that's not their first, that's not their first prayer. Uh, they pray, God, okay, we understand that we're going to have trials and tribulations, as that's what you told us. Our prayer is that you would give us the boldness to keep carrying on your gospel. Keep giving us the boldness. And, and maybe that's where, where we are right now because we are dealing with some uncertain situations. We are, we're dealing with a pandemic. We're, we're, we're facing some trials that we didn't ask for. But we have to find the enough nerve to say, God, even in this, give me the boldness 
to step out on faith and explore new possibilities of sharing my faith. Lord, give me the boldness so that I, I can stand out and be creative and displaying my walk to Christ so that others could be saved. God, God, give me the boldness uh, to walk without fear, but boldness to be a witness to others while we all are dealing with this situation. They prayed for boldness. I, I mean, you got to be really prayed up that in the midst of a pandemic, you saying, God, you're not just saying, God, get us out of this. God, deliver us. God, cover us. God, heal. You're saying, God, even as I walk through this, give me the boldness to stand strong. Because I want to be resilient. I want to be a resilient disciple that does not give up easily, but stands tall in the midst of adversity. Uh, that's one of the signs that you have the Holy Spirit, is that you have boldness even in the midst of your adversity. What was it that made... These early disciples have boldness. Well, one was they acknowledged the work of Christ. They, they acknowledged the work of Christ. You see, not only did they acknowledge, acknowledge it as in they were aware of Christ. And we, we, we know there's God. We, we know he's out there. We know he sits on the throne. We're aware of him. But it just wasn't aware of him, but, but they acknowledged him by applying his teachings to their life. And that's how we acknowledge the work of God, even in what's happening now. Because just like Peter and James said in chapter four, they said, God, whatever happened, it was because you want it to happen. It happened because it was in your will. Nothing could happen unless you gave permission to it. And so God, we acknowledge that what's going on, pandemic, virus, situation, life issues, we understand that you allowed it to happen. We acknowledge and are aware that even in this, the hand of God is moving. But not only are we aware, we acknowledge by applying your word and your teachings to our life, to this situation. That, that's how we do it. Uh, I, I, we, we are we acknowledge that the hand of God is still at work. You can't trust everything that certain leaders say to do, but you can trust the God that has proven himself. Think about the tools that God used to bring you this far. Dust out them tools, that prayer life, dust off that Bible study and devotion, use them same tools and apply them to what you are dealing with now. Don't just be aware that God is doing something, you must apply it to your everyday life. They, they acknowledge that the work of Christ was going on on the earth. Not only did they acknowledge the work of Christ, they also demonstrated the work of Christ. Peter and James is preaching. And the Sadducees are saying, who, who do you think you are to be teaching and preaching? You, you're not even educated like us. You, you don't dress like us. You, you don't walk like us. You don't, you don't have the churchisms like us. But Peter, with a strong conviction, gets up and realizes, I cannot be silent in a time like this. I must demonstrate that Christ is still at work. But Peter, how, how are you going to do that, Peter? Well, Peter is going to let them know by his own personal experience. Peter, who denied Jesus three times. Peter that said, I don't, don't, mm -mm, I'm not one of his disciples. Something happened between then and now when Peter stood up and spoke up and says, I'm going to demonstrate the work of Christ, not just by the gifts that he's given me, but by my own life. I'm not the same Peter that I was that denied Christ. That's not me anymore. I'm going to show you the boldness of Christ working inside of me that makes me so passionate and makes me preach with conviction because I know it for myself. He demonstrates the work of Christ by showing the boldness of Christ in his life. He is no longer ashamed, but he is living boldly 
for Christ. Peter said, you want to look at something? He said, look at me. Silver and gold, I have none, but, but such as I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus. And, and somebody ought to see the demonstration of Christ in your life. You should be able to live boldly even during these times for the sake of Christ. You are demonstrating the work of Christ, not by just your gifts and your talents, by simply your life and your testimony. Do you want to see the work of Christ? Go find a mirror and look at yourself and say, this is because of the work of Christ. I I'm not where I want to be, but thank God I am not where I used to be because you can look at my life and see the demonstration of God having mercy. You see the demonstration of God's forgiveness and his love and the reason that Peter can stand up with boldness and passion and conviction because he's had a change within his life. He demonstrated the work of Christ by his life. Acknowledge the work of Christ. Demonstrate the work of Christ. And lastly is the results of the work of Christ. The Bible says that although they were being threatened, the early church would help them remain resilient. The Bible says that they prayed. They came together and they prayed. And as a result of their prayer, the Bible said the place where they assembled was shaken. The place where they were they're assembled, where they were having church, there was an earthquake. Or earthquake or, or shaken, whatever the, your translation, all we know, there was some kind of agitation that happened in their assembly place where they were assembled, the place where they gathered to worship, an agitation happened. <laughs> and one of the signs of their answered prayers is that God agitated the place where they assembled. I thought about that. I thought about that, that, that we, we're, we're no longer in the church building. It seemed that God has agitated the place where we assembled. But what's interesting is that was considered a prayer answered. Hmm. Maybe God agitated the place we assembled is because he wanted to bring revival to the world. And we thought it was going to be revival where you came to church for five nights, had a guest preacher come in. But maybe God said, I'm agitating the assembly so that my word can get out through your life and through your testimony through your neighbors and, and to your co-workers that maybe God agitated the assembly shook it up just a little bit so he could see those who are bold enough to serve him in the house and outside of the house of God maybe, maybe God agitated the place and said I, I, want, I want to see who can stand when they ain't got when they ain't got the, the, the mass choir singing along with them. I, I want to know who will still stand when they ain't got the eyes of the deacons and trustees watching them. I want to know, can they pray on their own when they don't have the pastor to lay hands on them? Or maybe he agitated the place so that you can see. Thank you, God. So that you can see that the same God and the same spirit that's in the church building is the same God that's in your house. Please help me. Let me help you understand this. The church building is only one tool that God uses to grow his church. It's only one tool that he uses to grow his church. Now he wants to know, can I use your house? To grow my church. Can, can I use your house. Uh, right where you assembled. Right where you are now. Can I use where you are. To help the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be spread. And matter of fact. The Bible said they were empowered. With the spirit. And they began to preach. With boldness. 
And I'm praying for somebody today that you do not back down because of what you see and what you are dealing with, what you are currently facing. No, no. I pray that God grants you the boldness to keep walking in uncharted territories. Keep on giving you the boldness to be the great parent that you need to be and the great spouse that you need to be. I pray God gives you the boldness to walk into your dreams and to walk into your destiny. I pray he gives you the boldness uh, to walk out and see the new possibilities that come by trusting God in a different way. I pray that you remain resilient because you remain bold in the things of God. I pray that God would endow us with his boldness so that somebody can look at our life and say they're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we acknowledge you that you are working in our midst. Allow us to demonstrate your work through our life. And God, we thank you for the results that's going to come because of the work of Christ. I pray now that God, anything in us that should not be, that you take it out. Forgive us of our sins. Perhaps even now somebody's praying that prayer for the first time. All you got to write is me. And somebody's going to reach out to you. And I pray, God, that you would strengthen our faith. That we walk in the boldness that you have given us. It's not the time to be a coward. Not the time to have lazy faith. But this is the time to be bold in our walk with Christ. I pray for your people now. I pray that you heal, deliver, and set free pray for that person that seems to be overwhelmed. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. I pray for that person that wants to give up and throw in the towel. I'm praying for you because you are not in this thing alone. I'm praying for that parent that's trying to raise that child the best they can. They don't have no help. God, I pray that you provide for them. I pray, God, for somebody that's on a mental breakdown, close to a mental breakdown, that you would give them peace that surpasses all understanding. God, give us the boldness to walk loudly for you in this season. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to thank you uh, for all those uh, to continue to show your generosity and your love through your donations. Thank you for your faithfulness. We understand that in this time, it is an act of faith to show generosity. It is an act of faith to trust and to sow seed, and we thank you for doing that. We have several ways that you can show uh, your donation and show your gratitude. I ask that you would take note of that. And again, we thank you.